This week, we're going to take a look at the icon of Christ's nativity, a cherished image for the Eastern churches. There's a lot going on in this scene, but I'm going to zoom in on the very center where we see Christ wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in the manger. Jesus lies in a dark cave, which represents the world's darkness in sin before Christ's coming. We could say that for each of us, the darkness of the cave represents the darkness or sinful things in our lives that we need to get rid of if we wish to welcome Christ into the manger of our hearts. The straw and animals in the cave evoke the extreme humility and poverty of Christ coming among us in the Incarnation. An Orthodox monk and bishop named Athanasius wrote a powerful reflection about the cave of Christ's nativity. He's talking about an elder monk named Ephraim with whom he lived. When elder Ephraim of Kadunakia returned from Jerusalem, we were waiting for him to tell us his impression of Golgotha, the place of the crucifixion. How surprised we were when he told us that he was very moved by the cave in Bethlehem. Athanasios continued, When he beheld this meek, humble cave, which so touched him, he said to himself, Before visiting the Bethlehem cave, living on Mount Athos in the rocky, inaccessible Katunakia desert, in a modest cell that could barely fit even the most necessary things, I had the thought that I was something. Now, having seen the place, where God himself, Jesus Christ, was born, I feel all my nothingness, and I see how God humbled himself, being born in such a small cave, a pen for animals where barely any place could be found for him. He goes on, Christ, born in a den, persecuted and despised by all, thereby accomplished the greatest event in the history of mankind. His incarnation took place in absolute silence, in humility and obscurity, and of all mankind, only a few Persian magi and simple shepherds were informed of the coming of God himself into the world. God in extreme poverty and humility. And if we truly want a correct view of ourselves, and a true judgment of our conscience. Then every time life starts to torment us with worldly desires and demands, we must place ourselves before this humble Bethlehem cave, before the event of the Incarnation, and reflect upon what we are doing and whether our life and our deeds correspond to the life of Christ and what he did for us, becoming incarnate we can thus judge our entire life. Wow, that's powerful. If we think we are something, like the elder monk said, all we have to do is place ourselves before the humble cave in Bethlehem and we will realize our nothingness. That's pretty humbling, isn't it? But Athanasius said something else about the cave that really struck me. Referring to Isaiah's prophecy that the people dwelling in darkness would see a great light, he said, O God, upon whom will the light shine, if not those who live in darkness? If I truly feel that I'm in darkness, then I will surely seek the light, the light of Christ. May we spend the rest of Advent seeking out the light to dispel whatever darkness or clutter in our own lives may be preventing us from being ready to welcome Christ into the manger of our hearts. And may we intensify our prayers for the people of Ukraine who are increasingly dwelling in darkness due to power outages caused by the continual bombing of their country's infrastructure. Let's ask God to shine on them with his warmth and light. I'd like to close today with a passage from a pastoral letter that Archbishop Boris Guziak 
wrote to his people last Christmas because it's still very relevant. God draws souls to himself, especially in troubling times. New life is proof of this. A newborn child, in the harshest of circumstances, gives us perspective and hope. Mary gave birth to Jesus in a den for animals, not in a sparkling and sterile maternity ward. The manger, our Lord's crib, was a trough for livestock. The challenges only mounted. Herod sought to kill the infant Jesus. The Holy Family became homeless refugees in Egypt. The life of the Lord on earth began in dearth, dung, and danger. But he is the Son of God who brings hope and salvation to the world. Soon we will celebrate God's closeness in the nativity. We will greet one another, exclaiming, Christ is born. God's love never shies away from our hardships. Let us extend and multiply that divine gesture and continue to reach out to each other.